So I just wanted to run through the parts sourcing process that you can use to purchase genuine parts or aftermarket parts, or at least get part numbers, information, cross-reference between genuine and aftermarket, compare pricing, and just understand the, the various parts of that process so that you can um, you know buy stuff for yourself without having to get on the phone and scramble with a dealer and then try and figure out you know can you get the same thing elsewhere cheaper and how to um, get that information somewhere else because dealers will typically only want to sell you genuine parts um, that's just the way that they they make money so <clears throat> using blue city, city motorcycles as an example look i've never bought from them i just use them because they have a good parts diagram it's also across suzuki and yamaha um using a, an example of a bike which i which i have i can pull up the base uh, looking at a carburetor but you'll need to know the general area of what part you want to buy to be able to do this having a look at this diagram um there are a couple of main features of it the first one is it shows you all the individual components that you can actually buy from Honda uh, doesn't necessarily mean you can buy all the components from Honda the second part of it is it shows generally the assembly sequence of those parts so for example if you're looking at this hose assembly here you've got a clamp you've got a hose piece you've got another clamp you've got a little plastic t-piece clamp hose piece etc etc then you can follow your line to say okay well the end of that joins onto this plastic piece here some parts diagrams are better than others in terms of um, the assembly side of things. So this one is probably not a great example because it will show you something like this rod down here, but it won't show you where it goes um, in the carburetor, uh, nor will it tell you where these spaces go individually. So these spaces could be between each of the car bodies uh, and you wouldn't know that. Uh, unless you'd pulled apart the, the carburetor and um, taken some good photos and videos, which is a smart thing to do, so that you can get things uh, back together in the same sequence, in the same position. The second thing to remember about these parts diagrams is they don't necessarily show the orientation. So some parts, for example, let's use, this is, an, um, this is the choke cable holder. That's the way that it will go on the diagram. Uh, this here is your choke slider uh, mechanism. Same, it will go on the diagram that particular way, uh, but it won't tell you, for example, this spring, if there's a uh, part of it that is got uh, smaller windings than the other part, it doesn't really show you which way it goes on. So again, good reason to take good photos and know what you're pulling apart and what you're putting back together. Some of these diagrams have what's called typical parts assemblies. I'll show you a little bit more about that later, but it means that they will show you one part on the diagram, but you might actually need more than one part. So for example, when we're looking here at number seven, it says screw set. It's got a part number. It's got another part number, which is the superseded part number. So. Don't be daunted if you get two part numbers for the same part, either of them can be used. It just basically means that Honda's updated its numbers to be a different numbering system. Uh, but you should be able to use either one to talk to a dealer or whoever you need to. If for some reason they don't understand what the part number is or don't have reference to it, then you can give them the other part number and hopefully that'll bring up something. Very rarely has that ever occurred to me, but it has occurred. So for this particular screw set, you can see that it says quantity three. Sometimes it will say something like um, in diagram or on, on diagram or contained within. Basically means that um, for part number seven, there is three of them in this diagram. So here's part number seven. It's an assembly of two different things. Here's another one and here's another one. So there are three in the entire diagram. However, you might only need to replace one. So you don't have to necessarily worry too much about the fact that it says quantity three here. You can just change that to one and buy one of them 50 bucks 
as opposed to three of them for 150 bucks. You don't, if you're reusing parts, you don't necessarily have to replace every single part. Um, just bear in mind that that's what the quantity means. It doesn't need, mean that you need to buy that many. It's just saying that if you're to purchase every single item of that particular part new, then that's how many you'll need to assemble carburetors. The other thing to bear in mind with uh, you know parts and their references is sometimes you'll get uh, assemblies. So this particular um, item here, you can see this is part number four. So part number four is a joint set. So part number four, if you bought it for 42 bucks, that will contain two part number eights, which is your gasket set. And it will also contain this little T plastic T piece. So if you ever see uh, an assembly, uh, you can sometimes you can buy the individual parts within the assembly. If in this instance, you can. You can buy each of these gasket sets for 16 bucks. You can buy those, or you can buy the whole thing for, what was it, 42 bucks um, for the whole set. So it just depends, again, what, what you need. Uh, I When I re redid some carburetors like this recently, I didn't need any of the plastic pieces. I just needed the... Um, the o-rings at either end so you can you can work it that way but i mean i'll, I'll take you through a couple of other uh, manufacturers to show you just some different parts diagrams but essentially the principles are all the same some are a bit better than others with their, their line diagrams and I'll, I'll work through those with you so that's blue city um i use first class uh because again they're just local to me um so you know if i'm going to buy genuine parts i might as well use their entire part number uh, diagram to to look it up because they'll give me their actual pricing. Uh, where are we for braking systems from brake caliper? Let's have a look at this. So this is a little better. Uh, it shows you that this particular piston comes out of this part of the caliper. It's got its piston seals, its brake pads, its retaining clip, and then this piston, if you follow this line, it goes on the other side. Uh, this particular retaining bolt goes through there and holds things in place. Uh, and that's essentially how, how you interpret this. If you remember before I spoke about typical parts here, typical part two, but if you look at part two, you need 12 of them. So here's one shown, just to stop overcrowding of the drawing and any confusion, but you just need to use your brain and know that the, the other five will go in the corresponding holes. Moving on to Kawasaki, um, again, local to me, hands-on Kawasaki. Hands -on Kawasaki. I used to have one of these at 750s. Um, let's go somewhere I'm familiar with. Where are we? Break front master cylinder. Okay. Same principle all over again. Uh, you know, you get your reference number, part number, description. See, it says on image. That's just quantity. You know, what's the total quantity of that particular item contained in this whole assembly? So looking at this one, um, it's a socket bolt. It goes on the handlebar clamp for the master cylinder. You got one that goes in here and you're going to need a second one that goes in there. So that's why there's two there written. Uh, this one is pretty good. Uh, for example, your, your plunger or, or piston assembly shows how it's assembled, where it goes. Uh, so if you are to orient the master cylinder body the same way as shown in the picture, good parts diagrams will actually point towards where it goes. So the bolt goes in here, this goes in there, this comes in underneath, um, you know, this bolt actually comes into the side of the, the master cylinder into this position. Sometimes the lines are um, just a representation. So for example, this line here, this doesn't show where it goes. It just says that, hey, this is one end of the hose, this is the other end, and this is the same hose, and there's a clamp in the middle. So rather than just drawing the whole hose in there, which doesn't necessarily dictate um, the shape of the hose or the installation location of the hose, it just, does, it just says that, hey, you've got two ends to that hose. And for ease of interpreting the drawing, you've got the one bolt going through one side, but if you try and put that up here somewhere, you're gonna have to, you're gonna end up with a messy drawing. So they've just done it to say, hey, this end, this is where it goes in. This end, this is how it's assembled. And it's easy to just follow where everything goes. Talking aftermarket, aftermarket XV1100, another one of my bikes, just using them as examples. The only thing you've got to be aware of with Wemoto is they, they are UK based and have an Australian based um, business. So 
uh, they do work for off year of manufacture. So make sure you know how to find your year of manufacture on your compliance plate. For example, my Virago is a 95 release, but it's a 94 manufacturer. So I need to select 94. Sometimes between between them, they can release different models of caliper and all that sort of stuff. So just make sure you're, you're on top of that. Now, Wimoto, uh, one of the reasons I like them is they've got a pretty good range of parts. They've got pretty good pricing. And uh, if you own an old import Yamaha like I do, often, uh, you'll find that uh, some of these bikes are quite rare with parts in Australia and quite expensive, but there's, uh, there are a dime a dozen over in places like the UK. Uh, so Wiimoto having a UK branch, they can bring things in from the UK warehouse and then on forward them to you without all the ridiculous shipping costs in between by buying direct from the UK. So uh, that's one of the advantages of using a site like this. They're basically just Sydney based. Coming down here, uh, you can have a look at something like brake pads. So brake pads, we're talking front and it says per caliper. Brake pads, Brenta. Brenta is just a brand. You can buy either Brenta or EBC. And really the only difference between them is not, the, not so much the design, but the price and the, the construction of that particular item. So all these brake pads will fit this particular bike. It just depends what type of brake pad you want and how much you're willing to pay. So if you get a Brenta sinted versus an EBC sinted, I mean, you're talking five bucks difference. Uh, whether you want one brand or the other is completely up to you. Coming down though, sometimes you'll get something like this. You'll get a throttle cable, uh, genuine manufacturer part. So this is a genuine Honda pull cable for the throttle. And this is an aftermarket pull cable for the throttle. So, you know, do you want to pay 30 bucks or do you want to pay 56 bucks? You're basically going to get the same thing. It's not a, um, a critical part in terms of a, a finely machined engine component. So it probably doesn't matter either way. Up to you what you want to pay. but. It, but Wiimoto is good like that because they can supply you some OEM stuff and then they can give you some aftermarket stuff. Uh, third gear here, they're a part that I use more for accessories and bits and pieces than anything else. Uh, using an example for handlebars. You know, if you want to bling up your bike and muck around with different heights of handlebars and all that sort of stuff, yeah, 36 bucks for a new handlebar set. You know, you can buy a couple and try them out, whatever. It's not expensive. They make a range of different things um, in that regard. So they're very uh, they're very good like that. But you can buy proper motorcycle parts from them before. I haven't really used them for that. More accessories. They've got some good prices on um, things like luggage, tank bags, and all that sort of stuff that uh, you just can't find anywhere else. They're based out of Tullamore in Melbourne too. So very cost-effective way of, of sourcing bits and pieces. RPM Moto are basically a Brisbane based um, equivalent to Wii Moto. They don't quite have the range of Wii Moto, but they do have their own list of suppliers. So you can always email them um, with a parts inquiry and say, I'm looking for an aftermarket equivalent for this Honda part. What can you get? And they'll just email you back and say, we can get this, or we can get that, and whatever the price is. So I usually only use RPM Moto for a price comparison to Wii Moto. Um, I've bought a few things from them, mainly chain and sprocket kits, because sometimes they can source them a little bit cheaper, but it, it varies. I haven't bought something from them in a while. Uh, this is a site that I have found pretty recently. So if you've got really old bikes like me, let's use this as an example. A Honda. A 1982. Uh, some of these things you just can't. We can't find. Honda don't make them anymore. Aftermarket, they're even difficult to find. I mean, who would think you can get an aftermarket coil for a bike that's almost 40 years old for 20 bucks? I mean, I don't know. I, I'm pretty impressed. This this cam chain, you know, I bought one of these and it's on its way now. 70 bucks. I mean, uh, there are there are different ones and they're like $170. So cost effectively, Forseti is a pretty good brand, um, you know a full piston gaskets kit for 140 bucks. Like, you know what I mean? I, I don't know. I, I mean, I like this website. They, they're also operating out of eBay, but um, again, price comparison. Sometimes if you're trying to look for something uh, a little more difficult to find the other site um, that I like to use is David Silver Spares. They can often find some vintage stuff. They are UK based though. So you'll pay a little bit in, in, um, in pricing, but I, I've got a basket saved here of, of potential things that I could buy for them. You know, 50 pound, what, 90 bucks maybe, plus postage, 110 bucks. Um, 
you know, still a pretty good price, but just another another website that you can use. So hopefully that uh, gives you a good rundown on what parts diagrams are, how to use them, um, you know, how to interpret them, what it all means. And uh, by all means, if you have any questions or if there's anything that I can add or clarify, let me know. Otherwise, happy hunting. <laughs>